welcome to episode 29 of the Just One End podcast. Um, my name is Elizabeth Zimmerman. You can call me Liz. I'm coming to you from Cochranville, Pennsylvania, where I live with my husband, Greg, and our two children, Eric and Tilda. Um, it is Saturday, March 23rd. Um, you can find me on Instagram at uh, Just One End Podcast. You can find me on Ravelry as Algebrina. It has been a long time <laughs> since I podcasted. And I can already tell because just before I started podcasting, I spent a couple of minutes like getting the phone, you know, framed right and and making sure uh, everything to my side wasn't visible. Um, And when I did that, I knocked over one of the uh, one of the skeins of yarn that I purchased um, recently. And I leaned really far to try and get it. And my chair went (laughs) and deposited me on the ground. Um, yes, I did capture that on video, so (laughs) depending on how horribly embarrassing that is, that may be at the end of this video. (laughs) So, anyway, um, yeah, so it's been two months, exactly, to the day since I posted my last podcast. Um, I don't really have any excuse other than work has been crazy busy, um, so I've spent all of my downtime either actually crafting or, um, we've actually been playing a lot of, uh, Lego games lately, uh, Lego Harry Potter um, is one of my favorites, and I played uh, year one through four to completion um, last month. And then Eric started playing too. He's a uh, six going on seven. He'll be seven next month. Um, and he he's been playing that and uh, Lego Lord of the Rings. So so we've had some you know other things that we've been doing <laughs> in our downtime. Uh, the rest of our my family and I. Um, so yeah, so I haven't done a podcast in a while. And every time I thought of it, there's like, there's so much work when you haven't podcasted in a while to try and remember what you've done and gather everything up. And, and so I just, I kept putting it off, but I just finished, um, a couple of things that I wanted to share. Uh, so I thought, you know, it's, it's time to record a new one. So, (laughs) so I'm recording a new podcast. Um, some of the things that I've been up to, first of all, let me tell you how helpful it has been. To be keeping up with this every day, every day, a five year memory book journaling thing, Um, because it's a little quick blurb that you do every day. Like you can see what I'm writing is very small. Uh, You get a section um, for you get a page every day and five sections. So one for each year for five years. Um, So I have been keeping up with that every day. Um, and it's super helpful to be able to look back and see what I've been working on and what I've been doing. Um, I always make sure that I write down the projects that I've, that I spent time on that day. Um, and I also write down which books, um, I've been listening to, especially if I start or finish a book, uh, which I do quite often because I listen to audiobooks and I can listen to those, um, sometimes while I'm working, not usually unless I'm doing something really mindless. Um, but definitely while I'm crafting, uh, if I'm, you know, sitting on the couch in an evening, it's usually listening to an audiobook and, uh, and knitting or cross stitching or doing something. So, so this has been super helpful to remind me what the heck I've been up to for two months. <laughs> and I am definitely going to be referring to my notes because I have a lot to share. Uh, I'm going to try and not make this ridiculously long, but no promises. I don't know. I got a lot to fit in. Um, so let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so tons of work lately. Um, I, I've been working ridiculously long hours, like a 7 p.m. is an early night for me lately. Um, but I have had some fun in there too. Uh, in early February, I went to the Flying Fibers retreat, which is one of my favorite weekends of the year. Um, the Flying Fibers um, yarn store is located in Landisville, Pennsylvania. I talk about them all the time because they used to be 10 minutes down the street from me. Uh, so they are um, and always will be my local yarn store, even if they're not local to me um, <laughs> anymore. They're they're still not terribly far. I mean, they're, they're less than an hour away from me. So um, just, just barely under though. But they have an annual retreat. Um, it's a very low-key retreat. It's hang out in your pajamas all weekend and just craft and craft and craft. Um, it's at a fun little retreat center where we have like a lodge with a, a wood burning fireplace and, uh, we go to a dining hall for our meals. Um, it's really, it's really a lot of fun. So I did that. I think I brought seven projects with me. 
Um, and I touched every single one of them. So <laughs> a couple of them are finished objects that I've got with me now. Um, a couple of them, I haven't really done much with them since, but, uh, but I did at least work on, on every one that I, that I brought with me. Um, later in February, I actually took a work trip, um, and my company is based in Salt Lake City, Utah, so I was headed out there. Uh, while I was there, um, I actually, so the work trip was weird. I was working overnight shifts in 12 hours, but it was mostly just being on call. Like there wasn't a lot to do in those 12 hours. Um, so I had a lot of downtime where I actually was doing some crafting. I brought four projects with me. Um, and I went to, uh, two yarn stores. I went to the wool cabin in Salt Lake. And then I went to, um, the needle needle point joint up in Ogden. Um, both of which were a lot of fun. When I went to the wool cabin, uh, there was a knitting group there. They meet every Saturday. Um, so if you're in the Salt Lake area, you should check them out. They're a lot of fun. Um, there were some really fun people. I wish that I would have been able to sit and knit with them longer. Um, but uh, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, I picked up some wool while I was there. <laughs> um, one was a local dyer in Utah. It's hole in the wool yarns. I got a grand bulky skein. Uh, this is all that's left because two of my finished objects were actually knit out of this yarn. Um, but it's 100% superwash merino. The colorway is the green, uh, G-R-E-E-N-E. -E. Um, and I loved this yarn. Um, I skeined it up, I think, the next day, and I knit two projects out of it before I left Salt Lake. And I was only in Salt Lake for like five or six days. So, so that was a lot of fun, uh, to, to work with. I, I actually really want to be able to pick up more of her yarn at some point. Um, she does have a online presence. She's on Instagram, Facebook, and she has a website, uh, hole in the wool yarns.com. So that was, um, one trip that I took. Um, I also, or one purchase that I made, um, I'm going to try and not take all my acquisitions and put them at the end because two months worth is a lot. Um, but <laughs> I'm going to try, try to intersperse some of it. I also picked up a Wonderland Yarns, um, pack. I have another one of these. I really should actually do something with them. I picked it up thinking that I was going to actually put it into my fiber share package. Um, but I ended up finding some, um, oh, I can't remember who it was now. Anyway, I found a local dyer in York who will come to me. Um, in Needlepoint Joint. So I went to Needlepoint Joint, bought some Pennsylvania yarn, and that's what I sent in my fiber share package instead. So that is going into my, uh, into my stash. Um, but at Needlepoint Joint, so I picked up that other yarn that I can't think of who the dyer is. Um, but I also picked up a needle minder, um, for myself. And I'll show you that on my whip. And I don't have much to share with this anyway so i'm not really putting in the whip section this is the um 2019 stitch along with clouds factory uh there's the needle minder that i got it's a handmade um little thing <laughs> i don't even know what to call it but it's very pretty so uh so i picked that up um and let's see otherwise da, 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 da. yeah i didn't really do a whole lot um, in Salt Lake other than work and, and stopped in those two stores, which I actually did the same day. Like I, I went to the wool cabin first and then I drove all the way up to Ogden and then I got back just in time to work for that night. So, uh, one thing that's funny about living, um, you know, not where you work and, and traveling for work. When I was in Salt Lake, I got to meet one of my coworkers. Uh, she's actually based in Houston. So we've worked together for, like a year and a bit, I think. Um, and we got to meet for the first time while we were in Salt Lake. So, <laughs> so that was something that was fun. A couple weeks ago, we had the mud sale, uh, the annual mud sale. Um, mud sales are a thing where they're like flea market auction kind of things. Um, it's a Pennsylvania thing. Some of them have been around for like 80 years. Uh, the one that we go to is in BART. It's right across the street from my in-law's house. That's one of the oldest and it's been around forever. Um, it's a very interesting place to go. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of Amish that go. Um, you, uh, like I said, it's an auction flea market, basically. It's more of a yard sale even. Uh, so people bring items and then they get auctioned off um, and people just buy things. Um, but there's always a lot of food and it's uh, homemade and 
amazing and delicious. <laughs> and uh, one of my favorite things is the Amish made soft pretzels. They are so good. Like they, there's actually a uh, market uh, near me that's run by Amish. There, there's a few Amish stalls um, or a few, few stalls and there are Amish people who run them. And uh, they do make soft pretzels there. But these ones are piping hot fresh, literally dripping with butter. Um, and they're, oh, they're just so good. So yeah, so every year I look forward to that. And then they've always got a bunch of other stuff. Like they've got homemade donuts and they've got, um, they do uh, chicken barbecue, which is a thing here. Basically just like smoked barbecued chicken. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a thing. Um, anyway, yeah. So they, they do that every year and we go every year because it's super convenient that my in-laws live right across the street. Um, cause it's one of those things where a lot of people come. So they have like satellite parking with bus shuttles and things, and we don't have to worry about all that. So, so we always go every year. It's a ton of fun. My sister and her family came, uh, came this year too. Uh, they've come a couple of times in the past. Um, so that was a lot of fun. That's my word of the day today is a lot of fun. Um, and then lastly, I joined a book club. Um, <laughs> I've never joined a book club before. Um, I have a neighbor who invited me to join. Um, it's mostly her friends who she already knows. So I'm meeting people for the first time. Um, but it was so much fun. Uh, we read the book ghosted by, I can't remember who it's by. There's a couple out there with the same title. I'll try to remember to put, um, who it's by on the bottom of the screen, but, um, it's a really good book. I really enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed talking about it with people afterwards, um, especially with snacks and wine. Um, so that was a ton of fun. Um, I'm really looking forward to, uh, the next one we have a, it's a monthly meetup. Um, so yeah, I think the next one we're reading an American marriage. I think, I think it was one of Oprah book club books. Um, I haven't actually read it yet. So <laughs> I think I've got like three weeks until I have to worry about it. Um, which I'll probably wait the whole three weeks cause ghosted. I listened to on Sunday before book club on Wednesday <laughs> because I'm a procrastinator. So yeah. I was co-hosting <laughs> a new to you make along, um, with a bunch of other podcasters and I am going to reference them because I usually just say, not usually a lot of people just say, you know, as a bunch of people, I'm going to tell you who they are. Denise from earth tones girl. Um, Rachel from Treehouse Knits, uh, Chevis from Chevy Rell Stuff, I think is the name of her podcast, uh, Paige the Framer, um, Allison from Daisy Lane Designs, Mary Beth and Helen from Toad Hollow, New Jersey, also known as the Crafty Toads, uh, Julie from Sweet Sparrow Knits, Natalie from Remembrance's Pottery, um, Liesl from Buckaloo View, uh, Tommy from Squirrel Pie Productions, uh, Liz from Arrow Acres Farm and Leanne, her sister, uh, and they're the ladies from the cocktail hour at the coop. And it was their idea. They were the ones who organized it. Um, and I joined in and I announced it on my last podcast, but that podcast was two months ago. <laughs> so, uh, so I did contribute to the grand prize. There was a grand prize winner who got something from everyone who participated, which I think was a very, sorry, all of the podcasters who were hosting podcasters and makers. Cause there are some makers in there too. Um, anyway, so there was a grand prize winner. They got a prize. I included a prize in there. Um, but I also said I was going to pick a prize cause that's what we all did. We all said, okay, we'll also pick an individual winner. Uh, I hadn't done that yet. <laughs> so a month later, because now it's March 23rd and it ended on February 14th, um, I have picked a winner. Um, I took all of the Instagram posts um, that were up and then I just picked a random winner. Um, funny enough, the first time I picked it, because I took out repeat posts and I just looked at who posted, um, Chevis, uh, Chevis of the Chevy Roll podcast actually won. <laughs> so... Sorry, I did not let her win uh, my prize. So I picked again, and the winner this time was Holly Knits, um, who also has a podcast. So I did check out her podcast, and I subscribed. So that was a lot of fun. She does it with her daughters, and she, like, switches which daughter she does it with, which is very cool, because I think she's got three daughters. Um, anyway, Holly, if you want to get in contact with me uh, and let me know your information, I'm also going to reach out, because I don't know necessarily that you watch my podcast. <laughs> 
So I will reach out and let you know that you won. But um, I will make sure that you have a prize and that it is sent to you. So thank you to everyone, though, who participated in that make-along. It was really cool. Uh, there were a lot of cool things that people were trying for the first time. Um, I mean, the the things that people tried, I weren't even on my radar, some of them, um, which I can't think of any right now. But <laughs> but it was very cool that everyone was so involved in trying new things, um, you know, new crafts, new techniques, um, new designers, new, uh, new styles of knitting, uh, or whatever craft you were doing. So it was a very cool make along, I think. I don't remember if anybody said if it would be annual, but it would be very cool if it was annual. I think that would be fun to do because in January is a great time to say, all right, new year, new me, let's try something new. So it was very fun. Um, I am also going to try and come up with a, a knit along to do myself because I know that I have not been podcasting much lately and I want to like motivate myself to actually podcast <laughs> because it's so easy to just not that's the thing. I mean, you just, it's just so easy to be like, oh, I'll do it eventually, but, and then just not do it. Um, as you can see, since I did that for two months, but, uh, I will come up with a make along or a knit along or something. Um, if you have any ideas though, let me know something you'd like to do. Um, I always do a hat along in the fall. Um, so we'll do that one again. I think I do it in October. Um, but we'll do something, uh, something for the spring. So, um, yeah, so that's all I've been up to recently, like just stuff. Uh, that's all the chit chatty stuff. So thank you if you made it through all that. Um, <laughs> now let me share some of my knitting with you. I have six finished objects. Um, and some, I have finished some, you know, kind of over the two months that, that I, uh, have not podcasted. So, <laughs> so there's a pretty good spread of, of, stuff that I've accomplished. Um, the first one I'm going to show you, I don't have any of the information on this stuff. I'm going to make sure that I link project pages, um, down below. Uh, I'll try and tell you what I may remember, but it may be wrong. So, <laughs> so make me check those links out. Um, this is a skirt that I made for Tilda. It's called the sea and skirt. I know that much. Um, it has a cable detail on this side and you can choose what cable pattern you want. This is just the one that I picked. And then, um, it's got a pocket on this side and it's got little ruffles and a pico bind off. It is the cutest little skirt in the world. Tilda has worn it twice. It's been done. <laughs> it's been done since beginning of February because I've, I finished it at the Flying Fibers, uh, knitting retreat. She will not wear it. She thought it was cute. She was like, oh, that's exciting while I was making it. And then I finished it. I was like, all right, time to wear it. And she goes, no, I don't want to. And that's what she says every time I ask her to wear it now. So I am too excited about it. Tilda likes things to be her own idea. So I think I jinxed myself by, <laughs> by wanting her to wear it. So she won't wear it very often. She wore it to daycare once um, for Stripes Day for uh, the Dr. Seuss week. And then I think she, oh, she actually wore it to the mud sale because I wanted her to show um, uh, her grandma, my, my mother-in-law and, and uh, my sister and her family because it's really, really cute. So, yeah, um, I hope that she will wear it more. It is a little bit small for her. It's actually pinned right now. It's a little bit small, or sorry, it's a little bit big on her. Uh, that's why it's pinned. But that just means that she'll be able to wear it for longer. So she'll, she'll grow into it. But it's so cute. Um, I, I bought another, uh, skirt by the same designer who I can't remember who it is, but I'll put it down below. Um, <laughs> I think it's the tropical fish skirt. Um, but having learned that even though I think it's cute, Tilda probably won't wear it. Um, she does really like pink. So I bought a bunch of, uh, just acrylic pink yarns that I'm hoping she will wear. This one, and this one is Lion Brand um, Ice Cream. This one is Red Heart Amour. It's actually really soft. Um, and then this one's like a shawl kit, shawl in a ball. I thought that would make a cute skirt with kind of a color change sparkly thing going on. So hopefully she will wear things out of cheaper yarn because I'm not wasting expensive yarn on her <laughs> until she will wear stuff. So we'll see. 
So that's the scene enemy skirt. That's the first finished object. Uh, second finished object is the origami sweater that I finished. I think I was almost done this when I um, podcasted last. Um, this is another one that I think I finished at the Flying Fibers Retreat. Uh, no, I think I finished it before because I think I blocked it. No, I didn't. I sewed the sleeves on. That's what I did. I sewed the sleeves on at the retreat. So those are on. Um... I honestly, I didn't love the finished object just because I think the neck lays a little bit funny. Um, it's not for me though. It's a shop sample. Uh, this is for Paige. Uh, it's knit out of Malabrigo yarn and I love Malabrigo. So any excuse to work with it, I love. Um, it is striped. It's kind of hard to see from far away, but there are um, green and white stripes and then you've got the dark top. Um, yeah, the neckline lay a little bit funny. I, I had a um, Irina try it on uh while we were at the retreat to get some finished object pictures um and it just yeah I think it lays a little bit funny so if I made it for myself I think I would probably bring the neck in more so that it was more of a turtleneck um because it just kind of seemed to like sit out here um this is the smallest size it would never fit me anyway but <laughs> But if I did knit it for myself, um, then yeah, I think I'd, I'd make that adjustment. I'd, I'd bring it in more so it, it sat more like a turtleneck rather than just this really wide, awkward neckline. But there was another lady there at the retreat who had made the same sweater um, out of some very wooly yarn, which was very nice. It had a totally different, not totally different look. Uh, she used, I think she used like grays, different colors of gray. Um, so it did have a different look. Um, but it looked great on her. So, so she managed to pull it off somehow, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so this is the origami sweater. This is heading up to Paige's shop at frame and fiber in New Jersey. Speaking of which, um, the New Jersey wool walk is at the beginning of April. I'm not sure of the dates. I am planning to go up at least to hang out at Paige's shop. I may check out some others, but I'm not sure. Cause I actually have some work to do that day. Um, but I will be there on the Saturday. So if you are planning to go to the wool walk, um, you may see me there. So, all right. So that was finished object number two. Oh, and you may also see that sweater because it's going to make it up to page of shop <laughs> on that weekend. Um, finished objects number three and four came from that hole in the wool. Oh, yeah. Hole in the wool. Yeah. I don't know why I wasn't thinking that's what it was called anymore. Uh, the hole in the wool yarn that I picked up from the wool cabin in Salt Lake. And I finished both of these while I was in Salt Lake. Um, so first, I knit an ear warmer. It's a cabled ear warmer. I will link the pattern below. I'm pretty sure it was a free pattern. Um, it's super bulky yarn, so it was a super fast knit. Um, I'm pretty proud of my seam because I can't even find Oh, there it is. I can find it, but only if I'm looking really hard. So, <laughs> but yeah, I'll put this on. There we go. So it's just an ear warmer. I really like it. It turned out really nice. I love this yarn. It's so nice. So that was that one. And then I also did a, um, another ear warmer and this one has a little crocheted flower on it. And I have terrible crochet skills because it took me way too many tries to make this flower. <laughs> but it's also got a cool button on it. Um, this came in my fiber share package that I got the first time I did fiber share, which I think was like a year and a bit ago. Um, but it's like a little section of a tree trunk. Um, very cool. I thought it was the perfect button to go with this ear warmer because the green and the, and the wood. So... I love this ear warmer too because it's um, it's got some good coverage right here, but then it's just a little bit over your ears. It's just enough to cover your ears. It's not like super bulky on the back of your head. So I really like this one. Um, okay, so that is two more finished objects. And like I said, I finished them both while I was in Salt Lake when I was there for like five days. Oh, one hilarious thing though. Hilarious to me. I don't know if you'll care. Um, <laughs> one of the managers, um, for the project, he didn't have a ton of actual hands-on stuff to do, but he was there for like, you know, if he needed to step in and he was there to oversee things and, you know, he's one of those people who was higher up in the project. 
Um, so he was wandering around and I didn't have anything to do at the moment either. So I was like, hey, do you want to hold my yarn while I wind it? <laughs> so he did. So yeah, so he just sat there and I wound a ball of yarn and then I made those two, two ear warmers over the next couple of days. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, okay, my fifth finished object is one that I just finished a little bit ago. Um, this is one that you've seen before because I've been working on it for a while. This is the Dust of Snow Wrap. It is really long, so I'll start on this end. And go over. It's very, very long. And there. Yeah, it's really big. Um, but I love it. Um, it is the yarn that I got from my advent calendar last year. It's by Giddy Ant Yarns. Um, they are a company who is in the UK. And I already used the yarn in my Cozy Memories blanket. Um, during the month of December, every day that I opened it, I wound it up and put a square into my blanket. Um, but I had a ton left over because I'm pretty sure they were 20 gram minis and my squares only use about five grams. So I had about 15 grams left over. Um, each of these still only took like 12 grams, I think. So I've still got like three grams of every color. Um, so I may do a bunch more because that there's 24, uh, with three grams. So, <laughs> so I've got almost the whole skein of yarn left. Um, 24, three, three grams. Yeah, that's like 75 grams. Yeah, so I've got a bunch of yarn left. Um, so I will probably still use that in another project at some point. Uh, but for the moment, I think I'm done. Um, but the Dust of Snow Wrap, it's really pretty. Um, it's got two different lace sections. So this one is a bit zigzaggy. And this one's in the column. And then it's got two just basic um, chevron, like increase, make a wavy kind of look. Um, and then each color is faded into each other with some overlaps. Um, and it was just a lot of fun to knit. I knit, I think I was up to like here last time I showed it. I think I was just about halfway. Um, and then I worked on it a little bit at the retreat. I think I maybe put in like three or four more colors. Um, and then I put it down until about two weeks ago. And then I zoomed through the rest. Um, the second half seemed to take way less time than the first half for who knows what reason, but, <laughs> but it did. So all of a sudden I was just done. Um, it was a pain in the butt to block because it turns out that I do not have enough blocking mats. Um, and my AstroTurf that I love blocking on was not long enough. So, <laughs> so I kind of Frankenstein together a blocking mat AstroTurf like construction to, to block it out. Um, in the meantime, I did also purchase more of those blocking mats. I really like them. They're the Hefatius, I think. Um, they're like, uh, one foot by one foot puzzle pieces and they go together and there's nine of them in a set. Um, I bought two more sets so that I would have enough in the future for projects like this, that I, it would be long enough. Um, yeah, so that's another of my acquisitions is <laughs> more of those. Um, my last finished object is one that I started and finished in the last week. Um, this, and it also goes along with acquisitions. Um, this is the Knitting at the Library cowl. Um, I believe that's the right side up. Um, this is, I don't remember who it's by. Oh, I have a pattern for this one. I'll tell you who it's by. Ha ha. Actually, I know who it's by too. It's by I Rock Knits, who is Corey Eichenberg. Eichenberger. Eichelberger. Eichelberger. Corey Eichelberger. I rock knits. Um, so this is the pattern. It's a very fun pattern. Um, I don't do a ton of lace. Um, so it was fun to, you know, do kind of a whole thing of lace and different kinds of lace. Um, this top section was my favorite to do. I think that I would love to do more stuff um, with that stitch in it. I think it's called something column. I can look it up. I have the pattern. <laughs> it's called ridged lace. It's not ridged lace. Uh, pillar open work. Yeah, it's really pretty. I really liked doing that stitch. 
Um, some of the sections I liked more than others. This second section just about killed me because I messed up three times in a row. Um, <laughs> I was going to let it go after the first and even the second mess up. By the, but by the time I finished, um, or I realized I made the third mistake, I was, I was just, yeah, annoyed with it. So I ripped back all the way back to the beginning of the section and just started over. Um, second time, no issues at all. So I don't know what my problem was the first time. But, uh, yeah, so this is my cowl. I'll put it on. There we go. You know, I didn't even mention this. I am wearing my Bright Heart sweater, um, which I'm wearing it because I actually went out today and was wearing it. And I just happened to be recording the podcast on the day that I am wearing my sweater. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's the cow. I'm not going to keep it on because it's pretty warm. Um, just in general. So, <laughs> so I'm going to take that off. But I am really enjoying um, the look of it, and I'm looking forward to wearing it. I just blocked it yesterday, I think, uh, or two days ago, and got it off the blocking mats today. Yeah, this is one I set it to soak and then forgot about it. So it soaked for a day, and then I set it to block and then didn't do anything with it. So it sat out pinned for like three days. <laughs> so I unpinned it like two hours ago. Anyway, that is that one. Um, so the acquisition that goes with that, though, this was the um, book club yarn that the Toad Hollow ladies did. Um, I have I have not been watching a lot of podcasts lately just because there's so much to do. It's hard to keep up with the whole list. Um, but I, I love watching them. So there's, I have been watching and they are the biggest enablers. I, I swear, every time I watch them, I either have a new project that I want to cast on or I go out and buy their yarn or their bags. <laughs> so this was a book club, um, from February, I think it came with a bag, um, which you can see is the Dread Pir Pirate Roberts and As You Wish, a reference to The Princess Bride, because that was their book. Yarns were all named after, um, you know, scenes from the movie, like Have Fun, St Storm in the Castle. This one I know was Rodents of Unusual Size. I don't remember what any of the other ones were actually called, other than Have Fun, Storm in the Castle, but I don't remember which one it was. <laughs> one of them, was, I think, was called Mowage. Um... And then this one. So these are all the minis. Um, I have enough for a square in each blanket. You could, or a square of each in my blanket. Um, you could knit more repeats of each section. She tells you which ones to repeat if you want to do each section longer. I knew I wanted to have enough to keep um, behind for my blanket. So I made sure I left at least five grams of each. So I stopped at whatever repeat left me with um, five grams. So I do have minis to go into my blanket and they will um but speaking of the toad hollow ladies uh, one of their other episodes recently they were talking about some mittens that they knit um out of um some of their i think it's dk yarn uh, da, 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 da. i think it's dk i honestly can't remember and i can't tell sweater toad so maybe anyway it might be worsted. Um, out of uh, their yarn with mohair. Uh, and so these are both their yarn. So I picked these up to use together for the project that I have been enabled to want to knit um, <laughs> from watching their podcast. So uh, I think it's called the Waffle. Three, three Waffle? I cannot remember. I will probably link it because I'm going to wind that up and make that my next cast on. Um... So I will have a new project page and I will link that below. It's something to do with waffles and the number three in their mittens. So um, that is all of my finished objects though. Um, and a couple of random acquisitions thrown in there. <laughs> so let me show you some of my whips. Let me get a drink first. Mm. Let me tell you about this acquisition though. So when I was in... Scotland last summer. Something that I fell in love with is a gin and tonic made with elderflower tonic water. Um, I don't super love gin and tonics normally, 
but with this tonic water, they're amazing. <laughs> like they're just really, really good. Um, so when I got back, I wanted to have more of that. Um, elderflower tonic water is not something you can find everywhere, but it is something you can find at Target. So Target sells elderflower tonic water. All right, before I talk about, oh, I have it all the way over there. All right, before I talk about the whips that I have, um, I have one fail, um, which I'm stealing from the Wolf Slayers. I have a fail. Um, I can't show you because it's too far away and I don't want to reach for it and fall over again. <laughs> but it is the Prosecco sweater. Um, I got some yarn. I, it was a kit from something. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. I want to say I got it off webs as a kit. I don't remember. Anyway, I started knitting it. It is mostly in reverse stockinette, um, which means you're purling a lot. So I thought, you know, I haven't done Portuguese purling in a long time. Um, I know that I like doing that because that's how I knit my very first sweater. I think the one that I knit for my grandma, I did the color work cowl in um, Portuguese, Portuguese knitting style because you purl it. And purls are really easy with Portuguese knitting. Um, which is the style where you use a pin and you hold the yarn in front to, in the front of the work. Anyway, so, whoops, sorry. Um, so I started working on it. Um, I put it down for a little while and then picked it up. And then I think I either messed up at that point or realized that I had messed up when I put it down. Um, and also I was not loving doing the Portuguese knitting. <laughs> like it was still just really annoying to do. Um, so I had, I've put that down and I have not touched it since, and I'm going to be ripping it up because I've decided that instead of Portuguese purling, I am going to just knit it inside out. Um, there is a little bit of detail where you do slip stitches, um, but I can slip those backwards just by knitting it inside out. I am perfectly fine with doing that. So that will be a whip next time. Um, that is going to be the other project that I'm going to be, you know, starting, but technically restarting. <laughs> but the reason I know that I'm like, oh, I should really just knit this inside out is because one of my whips is a 75% done sweater. So this is the Ash sweater. Um, you may recognize the yarn. This is the yarn that I salvaged from my worsted boxy that I never wear. Um, and was huge. So, <laughs> so I decided this was a sweater that would be a good use for it. Um, this is, it's, it's still a boxy style of sweater, but the positive ease, um, between the one that I made and the worsted boxy I made is like 20 inches. So, uh, that's the difference between the positive ease. Um, so I think this, this one will fit much better. Um, also this one has pockets. You can't really see them that well, but there's pockets here. Pockets is my thing lately. Um, so there's pockets. This part down here is a half brioche stitch, um, which is very nice and squishy. Um, I just picked up and knit the collar last night after I'd put this down for a couple of weeks. Um, and I still have the sleeves to do. So, uh, so the sleeves, you know, I'll just whip those up eventually. Um, and then this will be done. So I, I do like it a lot more than the boxy. Um, I've tried it on. It's still a little bit, um, I, I don't know yet what the fit will be because it hasn't been blocked yet. Um, it actually seems a little bit short, but I'm hoping that when I block it out, I'll be able to get the right length and shape that I want. Um, so we'll see. I'm also debating the pockets. I may, first of all, I may need to rip these out because I don't know if I really, I, I feel like I missed a ball of yarn somewhere when I ripped this out and I feel like one went AWOL. So I'm not sure if I'll have enough yarn for the sleeves. Um, I still have like a skein and a half, I think. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell when you salvage the sweater if it was really a full skein or not. Um, so, or salvage the yarn from an existing sweater. So I think I've got about a skein and a half of yarn left. It should be enough for the sweaters, especially because this like it's already like halfway down my arm so it's really the sweater really or the sleeve just from the I'm saying sweaters instead of sleeve um <laughs> the sleeves are really just from like 
just above your elbow down. Um, they are full length sleeves and there is a half brioche cuff on each one. So there's a lot of yarn that's going to be used. Um, so I'm hoping I have enough, but if I have to, I may rip out the yarn that was used for the pockets. Um, and then I might do a different color for the pockets so that they would actually have a different color inside. I thought that would be a lot of fun. So, um, so I may, even if I don't need the yarn, I may just rip these out and then, um, pick them up and, and knit them again in a different color. So we'll see. But that is the Ash sweater. Um, I think the pattern is actually put out by Quince & Co. It's from the Plain and Simple book. Um, I did have to buy the whole book uh, in order to get this this pattern. So uh, so that you may see others coming from that, um, that pattern book in the near future. Okay. Another project that I'm going to... I consider it a whip, but it's really ongoing this I don't know when I'll ever have this blanket finished but I have put a lot of work into my cozy memories blanket last time I shared it I had just finished doing all of the advent squares um so those are like here um and then I decided to pick up from um the edge and go out a little bit so I've added some here and the reason I'm actually showing it because I don't really want to show you oh here's a couple new squares every time I do it but this square here is one of my big ones. Um, one thing that I really like about my blanket is that I'm putting different weights in and I'm doing different side squares. If I have like something where I want to show off more of the yarn, um, like I gotta find it. Nope. Nope. Somewhere in here. There we go. This is a large square of a sock blank that I had. This was um, a sock blank that I picked up from one of my first trips to Maryland Sheep and Wool. Um, it's Gail's, Gail's sock, Gail's art, Gail's art sock blank. I don't know why my brain's not functioning today. Um, but I wanted to get all the color variation in that, so I made a big square out of that one. This is the origami sweater. Um, if I'd had more of the cream, I'd actually, I would have made it three quarters of the cream and green striping with just the black up top. That actually would have been more reminiscent of how the sweater looks because it's just got that dark neckline. Um, but I didn't have any more cream. Like I, I got two rows out of it for this and that was pushing it. <laughs> so, so I did not have enough to do more than that. Um, but that's fine. So that's a new square that I put in. And then I uh, just got some more squares that I added. Um, I did these in uh, last weekend, actually. I, I put in half a dozen squares last weekend. This here is Tilda's skirt. Um, this is a pair of socks that I made last year sometime. Um, these are from my Optimist shawl. Um, these two are Stranded Dye Works, and this is Medusa Yarns. Um, and then these are from my Goldfish Memory shawl. So I've got a bunch of yarn that I've had just sitting there waiting to be put into my blanket. So I was excited to be able to put some of those in because these are, these are really, you know, memories. So some of my cozy memory blanket squares are just, they're just minis um, that I had either, you know, I've got the yarn advent minis in there. And then I've also got just some minis that I've picked up along the way. Um, but these are, you know, scraps of projects that I've made. So you've really got the memory of the project itself tied, um, tied to those. So, blanket, work in progress. Um, I also, so I cast this one on, and this is in my Steel City Stitcher Exploding Tardis bag. I cast this one on last fall, maybe. I actually took it with me to my last Salt Lake trip. And I think that was September. So um, I have not worked on it really since. This is the Woven Shawl. It's by Casapinka, I believe. Um, it's very nice. I am mid-row because I was working on it tonight at Eric's Cub Scout Blue and Gold Banquet. And uh, I you know, stopped mid-row because I <laughs> got interrupted. Um, so it's I really like it. It's got a cool um, woven sort of look to it. Kind of looks like linen. Um, but it's also just kind of boring. So I hadn't wanted to work on it for a while, but I realized when I went to book club last week that I had zero easy knitting. <laughs> Everything that I had to work on was like part of a sweater or, you know, I could have brought some cross stitch, but it would have been cross stitching and that's hard to do around people. 
Um, like I just didn't have any easy knitting to do. And I am not much of a sock knitter lately. Um, I have, I think two or three sock whips that I started and I just lost interest. And I think honestly, it may be because I, I usually do a heel flap and gusset. And I don't love a heel flap and gusset. Heel flap and gusset. <laughs> um, so I think I just need to embrace the fact that there are easier heels out, out there that are faster um, and that I could memorize. I know how to do a heel flap and gusset without like looking at a pattern. Like it's a pretty straightforward method. Um, so I think that's why I usually do it. It's also the heel that is used in the Rose City Roller. And that is one of my favorite um, sock patterns to do because I really like shorty socks. Um, although lately, this winter especially, I've actually really liked um, my store-bought longer socks, uh, especially because I bought a pair of ankle boots that I really like this year. <laughs> so, so I've been wearing long socks more. So I should probably give sock knitting another go um, and actually have some sock whips that I can pick up and take anywhere because it really was like, oh gosh, what the heck am I going to work on? Because I don't have anything that's easy enough to do sitting there and talking to people. So I dug this project out though. Um, so I, I remembered, oh right, I have that woven shawl that I haven't touched in months. I love the yarn. The yarn is, um, it's like a blue and green. I can't remember what it's called, but it's the one that I got from Ginger Twist Studios um, over in Scotland last summer. Um, so can you tell that I'm just like stalling and talking while I try and finish this row? <laughs> How about I just speed up this section? Okay, there we go. So there we go. So I have made, I mean, I've made a pretty good amount of progress. It is a two skein shawl though, and I am not anywhere near through the first skein. So I've got a lot of work to do. Um, but I did enjoy working on it tonight. So I think I will um, remember that I like it and, <laughs> and pick it up and go back to it. Uh, I did do some, you know, more complicated projects in between. And I think I'm ready for something kind of simple again. So that is that project. And here's the yarn and a cake. It's really nice. I really like it. Um, okay, let me check my notes, see where I'm at in my giant list of things to share. Oh, I dropped my phone. It's fine. Um, okay. Okay, I will share this with you too. First of all, here's another acquisition. This is a cross stitch bag by Stitching the High Notes, who is Joanna. Um, I love the cross stitch bag. I have another one coming. She just did an update, uh, like last week or something. Um, but they're made to order. So I'm waiting for that one to arrive. It's a maker bag. It's very pretty. Um, I love these, these bags though. It's perfect because I can put it in with my Q-snap intact. Um, that's another acquisition that I didn't even think of as an acquisition, but I had already been using an eight by eight Q-snap, which I really liked. Um, but then I decided I had two, uh, stitching projects that I was working on. Um, and I got kind of sick of switching it back and forth. So I got an 11 by 11, um, Q-snap and then ended up making two eight by 11 frames for my two projects. So this is on an eight by 11. So this is Frederick the Literate. I talked about this last time. Um, I don't think I'd actually done anything with it. When I talked about it, I think I said, okay, here's a project. It's 99% done. I'm going to work on it. I have been working on it. So, <laughs> so I had less than a hundred stitches of the white to put in. I did put those in. Um, I've been working on some of the back stitching. Um, and that's all I have left is the back stitching, but there is a ton of back stitching, um, to do. So you can see my little guy there. He's got some whiskers. Um, these books have titles on them now. Um, these books have titles on them. And then there's gold that is along, you know, the little line things on the books. Um, that gold is the bane of my existence. <laughs> 
I hate the gold metallic DMZ plus. It is stiff. It is tangly when you, this is the cat, um, when you, hey, that is my gin and tonic, thank you. Um, when you have your needle on it, like, you, you know, where your needle is on the thread, it, like, snags and, and makes that part of the thread unusable, so you've got to keep it all the way at the end. It's a real giant pain in the butt to work with. <laughs> so I actually haven't touched this since the retreat at the beginning of February. Um, I need to because I need to just get back to it because um, it's almost done. It's so close. Uh, but it is it is really pretty. So that is technically a whip even though it's not really progressing much at the moment. Um... Okay, so that was the other acquisition, though. That was the uh, the project bag. Um, let's see. Uh, I talked about that. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't bring it with me. I will insert a picture because I'm not going to get up and get it right now at this point. I got my hands on a Remembrances pottery mug. I am so excited. <laughs> because they are hard to get sometimes. Um, she stopped doing updates because there was such a frenzy. And people would be disappointed. And people got carjacked because it was on Etsy. And and so she stopped doing updates like a year ago or something. Um, so now what she does is when she has mugs, she just goes ahead and puts them up on her website. And she has a website now. Um, so you just check periodically and she might have one in stock. And I checked and I found one in stock and I was really excited. So uh, so I am now the proud owner of a Remembrances Pottery Mug. Um, you'll have seen the picture, but it is one with a little blue yarn ball bird. And he's singing and being a musical person. I think it's a really perfect mug for me with the little music notes on it. Um, it's just And it's got uh, socks on a, uh, like a drying line. It's very cute. I love it. Um, I use it all the time now, um, but I try and make sure that my kids know this is mommy's muck. Um, <laughs> and they are not allowed to touch it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I got that. Um, I shared the Toad Hollow stuff. I shared the Stitching the High Note stuff. Um, okay, last two things. So first is yarn that I just picked up on a whim. Um, I was feeling like I had money for some reason. <laughs> And then I hadn't been buying yarn for a while. And so I um, clicked on an email because those promotional emails work. Uh, and I picked up some Lolo Did It yarn. This is uh, Hippo for St. Patty's Day for 2019. Um, it's in, let me get it out. It's in Simple DK. Um, I'm trying to remember when I make impulse purchases like this that I really need two skeins of something to make a project out of it. Um, cause I've got a lot of just one skein. I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. Yarns that, you know, they're just kind of sitting there. Um, so I know that with two skeins, I'll have enough for, um, for a project of some sort. So I love that green though. Look at that. Fluorescent. So I picked that up. Um, and then lastly, this came probably right after my last podcast. Um, I kind of forgot about it because it came from England and it took a little while to get here but this is my um simply louise make your own forest friend <laughs> so this is a mounted stuffed deer head that i bought <laughs> um i first saw it on um sweet tino shade john was making i think he made the did he make the unicorn I want to say he made the unicorn, but I honestly can't remember. Um, but she has a bunch of different animals that you can do. I really like the idea of just having a knitted stuffed deer head just because it's whimsical and funny. Um, so I so I just got the deer. Uh, but they do have more interesting uh, animals that you could get. Um, yeah, but that I think is my last acquisition to share. Believe it or not, we're near the end. Um, so thank you for joining me. Sorry again, it's been so long. I mean, it happens. Um, hopefully this, you know, reboot, hopefully <laughs> this is the start of more regular podcasting. Um, cause it is a lot of fun. I like doing it. I just need to remind myself that I like doing it. 
Um, and fortunately, this time, I wasn't in a crafty slump. In the meantime, I had a lot that I've been working on. And I have a lot that I'm excited to start working on, on too. I've got a couple of projects on the horizon that I'm, I'm looking forward to. Um, I totally lied. There was one more thing I wanted to talk about. There are things that are coming up that are nitty events. Um, the nearest one, which I already mentioned, is the New Jersey Wool Walk. Uh, that is the first weekend, April um, goes into the weekend, um, on that Saturday, I'm planning to go to frame and fiber, possibly some others, probably not, but <laughs> at least frame and fiber. So if you come out to that, hopefully I will see you there. Um, in May, there is the Maryland, uh, sheep and wool show, uh, which I always go to, um, now I go with my sister. I am planning to be there at least on the Saturday, possibly the Sunday. I don't know yet. Um, but if you're going to Maryland Sheep and Wool, keep an eye out for me there. And then also in May, I'm so excited. I'm going to Texas and I'm going to go to the Wool Slayers, um, Camp Wool Slayer. I am so excited. Uh, since I wasn't doing a big trip this year, you know, like Scotland or something, um, <laughs> I decided I still needed some sort of a nitty trip. And so, uh, yeah, so I'm flying out to Texas, which I can't wait for. So, um, yeah, so if you are going to Camp Wool Slayer, I will see you there. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, okay, that really is it. So again, thank you for joining me. Um, and I hope to see you next time, which will hopefully be in the near future. Bye. I honestly don't know if I'll leave that in because <laughs> that was a bit of a non sequitur. So I just learned a very important lesson. You should not lean over in this chair. <laughs> Oops. That is it. Actually and truly.